We're here with my new baby, the 2024 MT-09. I'm used to saying 2025. I just literally this morning, this parking lot, I reviewed a 2025 Subaru Forester. Go ahead and check out that review. But here I am with my toy, my dream bike, my 2024 MT-09. It's got the refresh, new tank design, new seat design, redesigned, all sorts of stuff about the bike, new features that were previously only on the SP, like cruise control are now featured here as well, new electronics, new screen, all this good stuff. All that is great and dandy, but if I cannot handle this beast in simple parking lot maneuvers, there's no point in riding this bike safely out on the streets. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on in this video. Anytime you get a new bike, you should be practicing low speed maneuvers. Now the Honda Grom, that's, it was so easy for me to get a grip on that bike. It weighs half as much as this. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's super forgiving in every single regard. This bike, um, it's a totally different animal. It, I can't compare it, other than it having two wheels, I can't compare it to the Grom at all. And so here's the adjustment for the brake and the clutch levers. That also plays a role here uh, with getting used to this bike. I just reduced, I think, the length of the lever, bringing it closer to my hand as much as possible with this screw. I'm still learning a lot about this bike. Yeah, I don't think it's going, there it is. It's maxed out there. So I don't have the world's biggest hands. We'll see if that helps me in this setup. Proficient Motorcycling from David Howe, I think that's how you say his name. That book is worth its weight in gold. It teaches you the basics about motorcycling and most importantly, the safety things you need to keep in mind when you're riding. And so with this bike, I wanna do some figure eights with it to get the tires uh, a little bit, like as you can see here, I have not worn them all the way to the edges and I don't know if I'll be able to do that even doing figure eights due to my comfortability with the bike. Um, and I also want to get better at the braking with this bike, doing emergency stops, which I can do in this parking lot. It's, there's no, there's no one here. So you want to find an empty parking lot to do these two things to get more comfortable with your bike for safety reasons. So let's fire up that CP3 sounding good here. The book recommends you do an 18 foot wide figure eight. And so it'd be about from this end of these parking strips to about the middle of that arrow over there, the far arrow. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on for these figure eights on this MT-09. I would make, make mincemeat of it on my Grom, on this new bike that weighs so much more. And after adjusting the clutch, it's finally, I'm like my hand's tired from working and practicing, but the clutch is now set up to, I feel like it's much more controllable. So. So I would say where I'm at right now with my comfortability is probably around 18 to, or sorry, 20 to 21 feet with how I'm turning this bike, okay? I'm not on average getting that 18 foot, I would say. But the faster you go, in theory, the easier it is. It keeps the bike moving. You're less likely to tip over. Ah, that, I tripped over right there though. I wasn't going fast enough and I didn't have enough weight on the outside. So that was probably about a 20, a 21 uh, footer there. There we go, that was definitely an 18 or a 19 er But I'm a little bit better going to my left. That one, ah, I did it, I did it. I was about ready to fall over, but I left go of the clutch and voila. That one is a little, a little wide. And you're probably gonna have one side that you just suck on compared to the other side. For me, it's turning to my right. I'm left-handed, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I suck comparatively turning to my right than my left. Now, a part of that, I think I know what's going on. I think I know, because these streets are not completely even for the drainage purposes. Hey, but that was definitely my best right turn there. So going uphill will probably help your U-turns. So keep that in mind and your figure eights anyways. And going downhill makes it harder in my opinion. And just before you feel like full fall, before you fall over, if you feel like you're tipping over, start releasing that clutch pedal or the clutch 
clutch, but I'm so used to driving cars. Start releasing that clutch lever and that power will pull you through. You could make this a little bit easier on yourself and get some cones out so you know exactly the measurements, but just doing this over and over and over is really going to help uh, your comfortability and therefore the safety with the bike too as you learn about the bike's uh, characteristics with its weight, its geometry, its cornering, and its tendencies. There we go. All right. I'm pretty worn out from uh, that sort of riding. My legs are even shaking because this is not a Honda Grom I'm throwing around in turns over and over and over. There's also emergency braking, which we're gonna practice here real quick. Now in proficient motorcycling, they say to, no proficient motorcycling, I think they recommend 18 miles an hour. Um, hopefully I'm not getting my numbers mixed up because I think the figure eight was around 18 feet wide. That's where I was trying to go for, but 18 miles an hour, and then you ease onto the brakes here, the front and the rear brake for an emergency stop. You just don't wanna grab a handful, especially if you don't have ABS. You can lock up the tires. You don't wanna lock up the front wheel ever. If you do, you're gonna be flipping head over, head over heels and then the bike will land on you. So what we're gonna do is go about 18 miles an hour and then hit the brakes hard. And just don't give a whole handful the first time gradually add more brake as you get further into your run. So once I get to 18 here, I'm going to clutch in and then ease into the brakes quite hard. Ooh, that was good. These brakes are so good. The suspension so much better than the Grom. And we're going to do it again here at the stop sign. And just doing this over and over, you're going to get used to this bike or whatever bike you're riding. <laughs> this thing stops so well. And since I'm here, I wonder if I can, no one's behind me, I wonder, I wonder if I can just do a U-turn here. So I feel super, not super comfortable doing U-turns on this bike, but look at that. Look at between, the, between those two little, um, it's like a, a, a single lane, right? A single lane street. I can easily do a U-turn there on a single lane street now, which I wouldn't have been able to do that probably at the start of this video. There you go. Look at that. All right. I'm impressing myself a little bit. All right. So more back to that emergency braking. About 18 miles an hour. There's the 18. <laughs> this thing breaks so well. Oh yeah, I love it, I love it. I got up a little bit faster that time and once you feel a little bit more comfortable with the bike, you can uh, go a little bit faster um, to do your emergency braking. This is the first time I've done it on this bike. So let's do about 20 miles an hour now. It's hard to do 18 on this bike, even in raid mode. Oh my gosh. I think I can feel the ABS kicking in, especially on the back tire, because I can feel the chain moving a little bit. I think that's what's going on. Figure eights and emergency braking are two of the most important things once you get a, a motorcycle, whether it's your first or second motorcycle. Every motorcycle is different. So you want to get used to how it behaves, how it handles, not only for the safety of the bike, but for the safety of your tush. I'm gonna get, I'm kind of making myself nauseous. So that's when you need to take a break. But let me know what topics you would like to see on the MT-09 this summer. If you want me to do a more exclu uh, extensive video on managing the heat, I could definitely put some uh, hours into researching what to do, stay hydrated, that sort of thing. I think most of you guys are smart enough at this point to, to know what to do in the heat. Stay covered right here in Florida. If I had my arms exposed this long, I would have a sunburn for like two or three days. Um, I've been on the bike for maybe 40 minutes, but I would be burnt to hell because it's so intense down here. So even if you're not wearing a jacket, which doesn't make sense to me for protection, 
who wants a sunburn, right? Going sleeveless makes no sense to me. All right, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna do all sorts of videos on the MT-09 this summer. Fuel economy, mods, ownership impressions over periods of time, uh, maybe some maintenance stuff, that sort of thing. But I'll catch you guys in the comments down below. Uh, I love this bike. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. And also stay tuned because I will be getting a Honda SCL 500 scrambler bike on the channel uh, for a summer review, a long-term review on that. So I can't wait to, to tell you what I like and don't like about that bike. So far, uh, this bike is going to be, this bike is probably going to be like the stand, like the measuring stick compared to all the, the press bikes I get and how they compare. Oh yeah, the clutch engagement's like perfect now. Oh my gosh, right in the middle of the, of the pole. Very, very happy about that. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Be safe out there in the summer heat. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.